Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back this week. I have Naeem on the phone with us uh, via Zoom, obviously, as you can see. I'm super excited to have him here. Uh, he's a busy guy, and I'm grateful for his time. I know we got to go back and forth, and I'm just, I just want to start off by saying I'm super grateful for his time, and I, I'm excited to share his story with you today. I'm going to let him speak to it, so you're going to find out who he is, what he's all about, where he's been, where he's at, and where he's going to go. I know he's doing some remarkable things right now with his company, and uh, so I wanted to bring that to everyone. So everyone, with a warm welcome, we wanted to welcome you. Please say hello to everyone, Naeem. Well, hello. Good to good to be here. Right. So, as you know, the theme of this of this podcast is you know we're in the results economy. So I'm very sensitive to your time because at the end of the day, we got to produce results. Right. We're not in the time economy. We're in the results economy. So I'll be very sensitive to your time. I do a rapid fire. It's called Top Ten with Tony, and I just kind of go right through it. That way, people could really understand who you are and everything. So I'll start with the famous one word open. And uh, I would like to ask you, what is the one word that could describe your exact state right now? Optimistic. Wonderful. Thank you. Great. So let's go right into business. So how did you get TeleSense started? Well, I'm an electrical engineer by training and been starting companies or working for startup companies all my career almost. So when I sold my last company to Oracle, uh, five years ago, I was looking to see what is the next big thing. And next big thing was, in my opinion, IoT, Internet of Things, which is connected devices, wireless sensors, and then artificial intelligence to make sense out of that data. So question was, <clears throat> what industries have not been touched by technology so much where you can make a dent? So I spent the first couple of years looking at various industries, finally zoomed into agriculture. So in agriculture, there are again, there are different sectors. We focused on post-harvest grain storage and transport. Once you harvest grain, it never improves in quality. It goes downhill. Pest, humidity, mold, a bunch of bad things happen. Question is, can you provide insights to growers and people in the grain trade so that they can make smarter decisions. How long to store it, when to fumigate, when to blend, which one to sell first, how long would it be good for? So all those decisions, because it's a, it's a thin margin business and technology really has not touched this industry as much as it has touched manufacturing or retailing or e-commerce. So we found a situation when competitive landscape was very favorable. We came up with some new technology and uh, you know, a few years later, I've raised seventeen million dollars in venture funding, and we have now built a company of, and we are, have a great traction with the top grain names in the world. That's remarkable. Um, congratulations on your continued success, and there's much more to come. So um, let's talk about some recent wins. I know you just briefly mentioned, you know, the number with the seventeen. Um, talk about one of your biggest wins recently that you've had and also what you've learned from it so our viewers and listeners could find out a little bit more about that. <clears throat> well, you know, we are highly focused on this uh, in the grain industry and uh, primarily in the U.S., but also Australia and, and Europe. Idea was to make it super simple, almost idiot proof to collect data because we are a data company. If you don't have data on the stored grain condition, you can't make smart decision. So what did we do? We came up with a new form factor. So this kind of a device has five sensors in it and all connectivity, wireless connectivity, stick it into a pile of grain or stick it into some storage when you're storing in temporary storage and you start getting data. So just this morning, we were in Iowa and we got an order for a big order for somebody who's been trying this technology in temporary grain bags. So what happened was Diraccio, this is a weather effect in Iowa when a whole bunch of wind blew off grain storage bins. So a lot of temporary storage is going up and we are the perfect solution to make sure that temporary storage is safe. So just this morning we got the call, guys tried it, they love it. They just ordered a whole bunch more. Awesome, thanks for sharing that with us. And I know we don't like to talk about failures, but they're there. You know, um, sometimes you talk to someone 
they're like a 10 year overnight success, right? It's overnight success, but it was 10 year in the making, 15 year or sometimes five years in the making. So let's go into failures real quick. If you don't mind sharing with us, what's one of your biggest failures you've had recently and what did you learn from it? Well, the, the failures uh, are several because in a startup by definition, you're laying down the tracks while the train is approaching. And if you don't time it right, the train is gonna overrun you and be derailed. So you're always trying to build the product while there's a demand, while the product is still not fully done and tested. So th this happens, this kind of shocks happen every single day. So I don't even call them failures because that's the life you live. You live, mostly you live in this trough of sorrow. But you know, the, the failure was when we started this company, first we thought there'll be big opportunity in seafood monitoring. Seafood, once it's caught, by the time it's delivered, you want to have a whole cold chain tracked. So we did that because there was a new law called FISMA, Food Safety Modernization Act under Obama. We spent all the time and money, built the product, got the first 20 customers, then the administration changed and new administration was not enforcing any laws. So suddenly the need, which was driving the business went away. There was no compliance. Ah, we'll, we'll worry about it if somebody really pushes us. And then a lot of other inexpensive competitors showed up from Far East. So we had to pivot. So that was a failure in the sense that we spent two years building the product, but product became commodity and not push. But then we pivoted and we found grain and rest is history. So point is failures happen when you fail to see some other dynamics, something you can control, something you don't control. But biggest failures usually happening is when you're not listening to the market, you're not agile enough. The second biggest mistake is hiring the wrong people. And the hardest people, when you hire the wrong people, are salespeople. Because they're good at sale, they sell you on themselves and they don't realize that they were not the right people. So if you look back, all the people hiring mistakes I've made, majority of them are salespeople. Thanks for bringing that forth. I know it's, it's uh, you know, even though it's happened in the past, sometimes when we talk about things like that, it feels like it's still happening now, right? But we've learned from the past and it's, and it's only a failure if we don't learn, right? Like you were saying a couple of things. Um, let's talk about expenses. What's your most, um, what's your biggest expenses right now that you have? Um, well, tell us sense. Well, biggest expense is always people. So, you know, people are the most expensive. So biggest expense is always people. But other than that is, you know, travel is under control thanks to COVID. So, I'm the optimistic kind of person. So I see the silver lining. COVID, great. We've shifted from a bigger office to a much smaller office because office which has a warehouse and a bunch of conference room. I got a bigger office at home. So I'm saving money. That's good news. Absolutely. I was talking to another leader and he downsized his office. He took that money and gave everyone a raise. The money he saved, uh, which is quite remarkable how leaders like yourself in these times, there's always a positive, right? Yeah. It's not really positive or negative, but you always find a solution, right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, it's positive. I mean, COVID <clears throat> has several positive things. You know, you're able to work longer, work harder, get more things done because you're not wasting time and a bunch of other things. Yes, sir. Let's talk about your favorite online tools. If you don't mind sharing with us, what is your number one online business tool that you like to use as of today? Well, it, I'm not alone in saying this, is Zoom. And we are talking on Zoom, so we know that. I yeah. use it extensively. I can't believe how cheap it is to use Zoom, but it's a thing. Of course, we also use collaboration tools like Slack. Mm -hmm. We, of course, use, you know, we run the whole companies on tools. So they're, you know, Gusto for payroll administration. We have other tools for benefits, tools for communication, tools for tracking bugs, and tools for taking care of customers. So we probably company runs on about 22 tools. Awesome. Yeah, I, and one of these days, I'm gonna try to get Eric on here from Zoom. I'll have to get him on my calendar. Or if you know him, I know you probably, you're probably connected with him somehow, let me know. I would love to have him as well on here like you. Um, talk, let's talk about your best, um, what is your best resources right now for acquiring new clients? I know with COVID, everything has changed. Can't travel from face to face. And so you talked about salespeople. But what's your best method of acquisition, client, high value client acquisition? So, you know, my answer is very specific to my business. It doesn't apply to other people because we are in agriculture. In agriculture, you got to press flesh, shake hands, 
and, and trust. Farmers and growers are most skeptical people you will meet. So our technique is different than techniques which other businesses will be, other listeners will be fine, they can relate to. So we have a direct sales force. We have sales development reps who set up appointments. Then our direct field sales guys go meet with the growers and handlers, and that's how we do deals. So we constantly face-to-face. -face. This is not the industry when you do a lot of Zoom calls. I see. Thanks for sharing that with us. Now, if you're in my shoes, what's the one question I should be asking you that I haven't asked yet that you would like to share with us, if anything? Well, I don't know. This depends on the context, but you know, a lot of people have been asking me about what is the post-COVID world look like? Are we going back to normal? And that's a question that many people have asked. Now, it's not a timeless question, but the fact is, I believe as an entrepreneur, no crisis should go to waste. So this is a crisis and we have understood it and took advantage of it by reducing our expenses, getting more stuff done. We'll never quite going back to normal in my opinion, but we can go back to in two years from now, 95% the way we used to be. In one year from now, we could be at 80% where we used to be. So it's gonna be a little asymptotic curve catching up with reality, but doesn't mean it's bad. Doesn't mean it's, it's just different. We just need to get used to it and, and behave accordingly. Understood. Um, as we're coming to a close, it's kind of sad we're coming to a close. This happens so fast, but let us know. I know you're an author. Uh, I, was look, I was looking at a few of your books there online. Um, let our listeners know how they can find out more about you, your company, or if they have any questions, if they wanted to connect with you, if there's a Twitter ha handle you want to put out there, whatever you like, just let our listeners know how they could connect with you and to, to follow you and, and if they have any questions to reach out to you. Well, Twitter handle is just my first name. N-A-E-E-M. And the best way to do is namesafar.com where you can find, you know, connect with me and link and what my books are there and my other lectures are there. So first name, last name.com. My startup is telesense.com. So T-E-L-E-S-E-N-S-E. -E -E. Love to hear from you guys. Awesome. And let's finish it up, wrap it up with the one word close. So what is the one word close that you're feeling right now, Naeem? Purposeful. Yeah. Question is, what kind of life are you living? Does it have a purpose? What is the purpose? Because it's the joy comes from living a purpose-driven life. And when yes. you're adding and contributing and giving back, you giving always gives pleasure. And that's that's the word I believe in. Wonderful. Well, there you have it, folks. There's Naeem, purposeful, and he's giving back. He's sharing his knowledge with us. He was kind enough to take time to share with us his, about his wins, his failures, what he learned and his client acquisition, which is unique to his business. Um, I can't wait to have you on here sometime in the future with some other wins that you're probably gonna be celebrating. But once again, from, from me and all of our listeners, thank you very much for being on the show until next time. Good to, good to be here, talk soon. Take care.